first thing you should know is that today, I'm going to meet a whore. Well, that makes a nice change. Today, I am going to meet Brooke Magnanti, um, a.k.a. Belle du Jour the woman I have played uh, for the last three series of Secret Diary of Cool Girl. And um, we've met once before under very different circumstances. I wasn't allowed to know very much about her. And it was purely, you know, research purposes. And this time we're gonna have a very frank, honest, exposing conversation. Escort, hooker, prostitute, or I don't mind what you call me. That's just semantic. The Secret Diary of a Cool Girl. A flirty, sexy, funny ride <laughs> through the intriguing double life of Feisty Belle, the high-class escort with an insatiable appetite for sex, money, and London life. There have been scandalous orgies, fetishes, and fantasies. Him, that's Ben, the best mate. It's complicated. Me and you are over. Her, Stephanie, She's the money-grabbing madam. A city without whores is like a house without bathrooms. This guy, Alex, the boyfriend, we kind of screwed that one up. I've never felt so humiliated, disgusted and appalled in my life. You, on the chair. And of course, many, many satisfied customers. <sighs> but what's kept millions enthralled is that these wild antics are not a work of fiction, but inspired by the real-life experiences of a genuine prostitute. Known only as the mysterious Belle du Jour, her raunchy blog and bestseller have rocked the publishing world. And for six years, the question on everyone's lips has been, who is the real Belle du Jour? Well, now we know. In November 2009, Belle decided to reveal herself to the nation. In real life, the American-born Brooke is a highly educated woman, a doctor, and currently a research scientist at Bristol University. I want to know what led Brooke into prostitution. I want to know how she feels about herself today, if, if life has changed, how that's changed. I want to know if she feels like she's glamorised prostitution. That's a question I'm constantly asked. I want to know if she misses it. And um, I think she's feeling like it's time to tell all. This is the hotel where we shot the first scene of Secret Diary of a Cool Girl. Back then I was getting into character. Imagining Belle being confident and daring, bold. I've always played her as a strong woman, tenacious and in control. Today I will find out if my assumptions were correct. We're currently here in a hotel suite. I'm waiting for Brooke to arrive and I'm feeling pretty nervous actually because um, kind of how I imagine a client would feel waiting for her to show her face and um, kind of mostly because I have to interview her and I've never done that before. anyone before it's not as if I've been interviewed loads of times so. okay so we're in the same boat yeah we're feeling much. similar one of the things that I had to get my head around when I was playing you was that um, I was actually playing two very different people Belle mm. and Hannah did you really have two mobile phones two wardrobes I did yeah especially with the underwear mm. work knickers and the rest of my knickers never intersected and did also did it make it easier just to be able to switch from one person to the other, having like... It was a bit like putting on a uniform. Yeah. The hair, the makeup, the particular dresses, the mm. underwear, the shoes, definitely the shoes. Yeah. Once these shoes are on, I'm at work now. How old were you when you lost your opportunity? 16. Yeah. One of my very first boyfriends when I was 16 mm. uh, was a bit older than I was. How old is he? 32. He sexually educated you? Um, yeah, he was very open-minded, yeah. and he gave me the freedom to be open-minded. What kind of things would you do together? I enjoyed looking at porn, and I became interested in anal sex, but obviously I'd never done it before. Mm. And so I thought, right, well, I'll bring this up with him. And he sort of sat down with me and he said, 
we'll gradually work our way up to, to this. And if at any point you want me to stop, say stop and we'll okay. never do it again. Right. And sexually speaking, it was a very fun relationship. And um, what were your ambitions? What were your dreams? wanted to be a physicist. Mm. The idea of discovering something new, that something was out there to be found, we didn't know everything yet. I wanted to be a part of that. And um, during your PhD you moved to London to find work, and these were tough times? Yeah, pretty Those hard actually. Some people, well most people would consider stuff like temping, Working in a bar. Busking. I'd considered a few other things first, but those things don't really pay that well. I was going to do whatever I had to do. Where I got to be the scientist I wanted to be mm. was not going to let anything get in the way of that. What was the catalyst that led you to become a cool girl? I know the story about you um, meeting the couple. Mm. Can you tell us about oh, that? Oh, yeah. And, and this was almost exactly as it happened in the show, except in the show it was just the one person, it wasn't a couple. Yeah met them they were just gloriously beautiful couple very successful very smooth was there a bit of touchy feely in the in the restaurant yeah there a bit was of a under bit. the table action yeah, a little bit he actually set me a challenge and he said to me look at that clock see if you can make her come in the next 15 minutes <laughs> And I thought, what oh, a challenge! I know. I thought, well, I'm going to have to change seats <laughs> first off. And did you make her come in 15 minutes? I did. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> they must have been pleased. They made the inevitable suggestion to go back to hers. I didn't say no. Sex was more girl on girl mm -hmm. with him watching, right. and then he had intercourse with her. Mm -hmm. He rang a cab, it came, he walked me out, and he just put a load of money in my hand. And what are we talking, like? I, it was probably about 120, 150 pounds. It was just what was in his pocket. I went home, and I had to think about it. Started applying for agencies, and, uh... Oh, you did? Yeah, well, you just send off a little email and a photo of yourself and, yeah. and, you, and you think, OK, Testing well... Testing the water. And, the, and you were looking at the, the higher end of things. You were... Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's not worth... It wasn't worth doing otherwise. Yeah. If I had one appointment a week, would that pay my rent? Mm. Yes, it would. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I have an agent. She vets all my clients. Two lovely new gentlemen for you today. OK. An out call for this evening and an in call this afternoon. Well, shit, shower and shave, sweetheart. He's on his way over now. So then how would they vet the clients? Um, usually clients would make contact through the website. Yeah. The agency would contact them back and then they would need to have a landline number and a credit card number. How does a credit card and a name make them safe? It's it, it, sa it, it is safer than nothing. For me, meeting people in hotels is important. You know there's CCTV everywhere. Yeah, that's true. There are people everywhere. There are thin walls. Mm. You know, it's not the safest thing in the world. But then going to a house party full of people you don't know, Absolutely. anybody could be there. Anything could happen. As far as that line of work is concerned, I, mm. I was convinced that it was as safe as it could be. Talk us through the day the agency called you and told you you had your first client. I understood from the agency that he was someone they knew well. It was somebody who had seen a number of their girls before. He was the perfect client. He opened the door, he took my coat, offered me a drink, gave me the money in the kitchen. Were you petrified or no? Until the point I knocked on the door. And I, I can actually, I have that moment in my head of thinking, oh, my hair, oh, my makeup, where do I look? Is he going to be tall? Is he going to be my height? Is he going to be short? Where do I look? And then the door opens and, I th you know, it was just gone. It was like, I'm here now, I'm doing this now. And how was the sex? It was good. It was accomplished. Uh, there was nothing unusual about it. It was standard. Missionary? Mm, I think he was behind for a bit. Right. And what was your first thought when you left the room? Did you have to go... <gasps> there was a little bit of that. Yeah. There was a little bit. There's also a little bit... Do you know when you're leaving somewhere, you think, I haven't left anything. I do have my phone, yes? I've had my keys, yeah, OK? just... And then I things. had to ring the agency to let them know that I had left and had left on time. Did you think oh, that was successful, Surprising, felt surprisingly okay with that? I, 
mean, let's be honest, I wasn't a virgin. No. <laughs> I had had one night stands before. No, but the fact that money had changed hands, which I suppose is what makes everyone so uptight, not the act It's itself. all right if somebody goes home with somebody they don't know and has sex for free. Right, but the fact that it's money changes right hands. It's not all right if there's a third party involved who makes sure the fellow is okay and there's some money involved. Yeah. Which is something I don't quite understand. Right. But um, because I decided to do it for the money, it didn't enter my head to feel strange about having accepted money for it. That was the whole point. That was why I'd gone. It wasn't long after your, um, your first experience, your first time with a client, that you mm. decided to write the blog. Yeah. What, how did that happen? I had had a funny experience. And I thought, well, I'll write about it. Yeah. And if anyone else wants to read it, then they might find it funny too. There are some people who do this job who are racked with guilt about what they're doing. Yeah. For which I would say, get out of it no amount of money in the world that is worth feeling like you've betrayed yourself. No. And I didn't feel that way. Right. And the more I did it, the more I came to enjoy being good at it. Right. It's like that in a lot of jobs, though, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, of course. It? I mean, you, you must, you must know when you've absolutely nailed a scene, mm -hmm. when you've got it and you just thought, that was great, I've done it there. And you must know when you've absolutely nailed a man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.